Welcome to this tutorial that introduces you to the Video Studio interface. Oftentimes the most intimidating part of using any new app is not knowing how and where to start. This 10,000 foot view will take you through the three main tabs, Capture, Edit, and Share, along with the various windows, media, and effects options, and with the timeline organization and functionality. Go to the tutorial page in the Discovery Center where you can download a written tutorial and screenshots if you'd like to follow along. Let's take the tour. Launch Video Studio and the first feature you'll encounter is the Welcome Book, also known as the Welcome Screen or the Home tab. What's New tab is updated regularly with the latest tutorials, tips, blog posts, contests, and more. The Tutorials tab has a selection of our most popular tutorials from beginning to advanced. Get More is your Video Studio shopping mall for extras, templates, media files, and effects. There's even some freebies available. The next three tabs are your workspaces where you acquire, edit, and output your movies and slideshows. Let's start with Capture. In the Edit tab, you can easily import files that are already on your computer. But if you need to live capture or get content off your external devices, the Capture tab is where to do this. I'll click each tab and give you a short explanation. Click Capture Video to import video footage and photos from your camcorder or your webcam into your computer. Use DV Quick Scan to scan your digital videotape and select which scenes you want to save. Click Import from Digital Media to add already digitized media from a DVD video, AVCHD, Blu-ray formatted discs, or from your hard drive. One of Video Studio's very cool and unique features is its ability to shoot stop-motion animation. It's a lot easier than you might think, but that's for another tutorial. This is the live screen capture area. Depending on which version of Video Studio you're using, this will either be live screen capture or multi-cam capture. When you click on it, it will launch the screen capture software in a separate window with settings that you can adjust. Let's jump to the Edit tab. This is where your projects all come together. Three windows are your keys to success here. Let's start with the Preview window. Using the playback controls, the Preview window lets you view any clip or still you've selected from your library on the right, or that you've already placed in the timeline below. We could easily expand this window as well, which would make it a lot easier to, for you to view, so let's do that. Playback options, of course, include Play, Pause, and Stop, but they also include Return to Start, Go to the End, Frame Step Playback, Loop, and an audio volume adjustment. Other options include using the start end markers and scissors to trim ends off your clips before you place them into the timeline, or even to trim multiple clip sections that will be added to your timeline. Although dropping your first clip into the timeline will pop up the option to adjust the movie's properties to your clip's properties, you can set your aspect ratio or planned output specs here after the fact. One of the options I use often is the project versus clip choice here. Depending on what you're previewing, playback may only play that one selected track. Instead, you may desire to play all the tracks together, such as audio and video. To do that, be sure to click Project. The library panel holds all the various types of content you'll be using. Let's start at the top. Media includes built-in video samples, music, and any content you import or capture into folders that you can add and name appropriately. Media can be dragged and dropped into this window or imported through browsing. Next are built-in instant projects or slideshow templates that you can use to put your own content into placeholders. The third icon down holds transitions, which are fancy ways to blend one scene into another, avoiding any harsh changes you might notice otherwise.
Next are titles, where you can create your own or use literally dozens of customizable drag and drop built in choices. Next are graphics that you might want or need to add into your projects, such as backgrounds, frames, objects such as icons or clip art images or patterns. Filters include dozens of special effects you can add to any clip. Just drag and drop one or more of them onto a clip. Then double click the clip in the timeline to open the options panel and try various presets, customizations, and even audio filter options. Rearranging the order of multiple effects will actually affect the result. Finally, paths are pre-built animation routes for your content to follow. This feature can be used on any track containing visual content. In other words, not audio tracks. A couple final notes. Most every element in the gallery can be adjusted, edited, and fine-tuned for custom creativity, mainly by double-clicking your clip in the timeline to open the options panel, like I did earlier with the filter, or by editing directly on the screen, such as you can do with text. These three icons in the lower right-hand corner provide viewing options for the gallery, basically how much of the gallery versus the associated options you'd like access to. The timeline here at the bottom is where you place your media into the various tracks for video, overlays, text, and audio. Your movie will play from left to right. The topmost track is your background, whether that be a movie or a still. Tracks underneath get layered on top of the background. Use the track manager here to add additional tracks as needed. Enabling ripple editing will assure that any tracks you choose will move forward if you were to add something to the beginning so as not to break any synchronizations. Use the zoom in, zoom out, and fit to timeline icons to adjust the viewing area of your timeline's content. Use either the scroll bar or your mouse's scroll wheel to navigate along your timeline as well. Use these little green arrows to mark spots on the timeline as reference points for items such as future cuts or content additions. The Timelines toolbar is also loaded with great features. The two icons on the far left will switch you between this current timeline view and a storyboard view where you can easily rearrange your clips. Click this icon to see options for customizing what tools are viewed in this toolbar for easy access. I currently have them all selected, so they're all already viewed in the toolbar. Then you have your Undo and Redo buttons. The Record Capture option gives you the options you previously saw in the Capture tab. The Sound Mixer allows you to adjust sound volumes along any parts of your clips and even the ability to interactively create a surround sound effect that will actually change speaker locations while your project plays. Auto Music allows you to mix your own music. Track Motion allows you to stick an object onto any spot on your video and that object will follow that spot as your video plays. An example of this might be a pixelated graphic that's placed over a license number as a vehicle moves through your video. The Subtitle Editor will create subtitles that will occupy the lower third of your clip. You can even accomplish this by tying it to a text file. The Multi-View Editor lets you synchronize clips from up to six cameras and edit them on the fly as the video clips play back simultaneously. Time remapping lets you use speed controls to slow down, speed up, reverse, or freeze frames in your clips. The Mask Creator lets you create video and still masks. Pan and Zoom allows you to zoom into a photo or a video and animate the view around, kind of like what the History Channel does with old photographs. The 3D Title Editor will extrude your plain text to create objects that can be animated in 3D space. 
Finally, the Split Screen Template Creator will let you create your own multiple content windows similar to the instant projects you saw earlier. A major note regarding the Edit Workspace is the overall customization of the layout itself. Notice the multi-dotted upper left corners of each panel? You can use this to rearrange edit panels. This can be helpful with multiple monitor setups. You can even save these for future use and then still easily return to the default Video Studio view. Now that you have an overview of getting content into Video Studio and the many options available to combine and edit your content, let's see what options you'll have to share your productions with the world. Let's go to the Share tab. Video Studio has about every output option you can think of. Starting at the top, you can see all the file options to save your project to your computer. Each option here provides a bunch of other options properties for codecs, frame size, frame rates, and quality. Next down are options for outputting to a portable device or back to a video camera. Next are options for saving to the web, which includes specific settings for social media sites. Choosing YouTube will not only render your movie to YouTube specs, but it will launch your YouTube account and upload your movie along with any tags, your preferred category, and privacy settings. It will also save the movie to your computer. Saving your project to disk also provides several format options, including DVD, which will launch a window where you can create chapters, menus, and DVD designs. Finally, another unique option is to the 3D format that will create either anaglyph, you know, those red and green glasses, or stereoscopic choices. And there you have it. Hopefully, now you'll feel more comfortable exploring and trying Video Studio features on your own. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial to follow along and find other helpful tutorials including many topics discussed in this video.